We'll begin this short video by having a closer look at the Insert Table dialog box and the options there. The first option is the Name box. We can give our table a name that connects to what it's for, for example, um, February Sales. We can specify how many columns, how many rows, five columns, eight rows, nine rows, fine. Under the Options section, the heading means that the row specified as a heading is a title row. That is, it has the column names in it. You can specify how many rows would be the title row. We're just going to go with one. And repeat heading means that should the table go over more than one page, those column titles would repeat on the next page. You could check don't split table, in which case this becomes moot. Border means that you have a printed border to the table cells. I'm going to deselect it so you see what it does. And I'm going to click OK. Now when we come to the table, we see several things. First of all, we see that the table is pale gray in appearance. That's because the grid lines showing you where the table cells are are there, but they are not printed border lines. Let me go to page preview to show you. You see on page preview, we have a perfectly blank page, no table at all. But we do have the shape of the table here. Also, you remember we chose one heading row. You'll see that in the heading cells, the alignment is set to center. In the data cells, that is the rows other than the heading, the alignment is set to left. Also down here in this data bar, you recall we called the table the February sales table, and that's the name that shows up in the data bar with the memory helper. Table names are mostly used when you are building tables in a database. But they're also useful in a long document if you need to keep track of different tables. Let's really get rid of this table. Let me show you briefly how to do this. This is the select whole table arrow. With the whole table selected, we will choose delete table. I'm just going to undo that and show you that if we don't choose delete table, but if I just hit the delete key, then the table doesn't go away. The delete key deletes the contents of table cells. It doesn't delete the table cell or the table itself. In order to delete components of the table, you must choose the table menu and choose delete. If you have trouble with these selection arrows, these dark black arrows, that you can find for tables and rows, then you can use the select menu on the table and choose column, row, or the entire table. Just depends on whatever you're most comfortable working with. One other look at the table border option. As you can see, we're back at the insert table dialog box with all the settings the same, except that I have left border checked this time. I'm going to click OK. And now we have the table with the bold black outlines around each cell. And when I click print preview, you'll see that those are printing cell borders not just non-printing grid lines as we had when we deselected border. 